This is the uh, last chapter for the week. It's called Visitors. And so it was that while Mr. Today was holding a meeting on the lawn to give the most recent development to all humans, statues, and domesticated creatures, and while Araya called to order a similar meeting of all the wild creatures in the jungle, the squeaky, quillitary vehicle containing the High Priest Justine, Governor Strang, and Assistant Secretary Stowe came to a stop outside the vast iron gate. And because no one had ever come through the gate without six months' notice, and because only one person in all of Quill had a key to the gate, and because the remaining three journos had trickled to the fringe of the crowd on the lawn so that they could hear just a little more clearly, there was no one there to notice it. This is getting good. Except for Simber whose keen senses were the best of anyone's. But by the time the great winged cheetah had bounded over a row of Artimians and thundered toward the gate, growling out a warning to Mr. Today that the that's uh, growling out a warning to Mr. Today that set the entire land of Artime on their feet and reaching into their component vests for their magical weapons. It was too late. The gate was swinging open. A look passed between the great old mage and the stately cheetah. It was a look only two friends who have known each other for many, many years could understand. So while Mr. Today held up his hand to silence the Artemenians, the stone cheetah stood solid, his enormous wings outstretched to their full span of 20 feet or more and acted as a shield between the visitors and the crowd to keep the enthusiastic folk from descending on the three quillants like a thousand unwanted ghosts on the Eliminator. And just as the three stepped around the iron door, an enormous gray wolf burst from the seaside entrance of the mansion and bounded towards Mr. Today until he saw that he was already too late. But he was hardly noticed since all eyes strained to see around or above or below the great expanse of Simber's wings. With a soft word and a gentle hand, Mr. Today motioned the enormous crowd to be seated and because they trusted him, they did so. Most of them realizing, after thinking about it for a moment, that the visitors would be so overwhelmed at the sight of Artemis that they would likely need no containment. 
but Alex didn't notice everyone sitting. He didn't notice Lanny tugging at his hand, and he didn't notice that when she was unable to pull him down, she stood back up and simply held his arm. And he didn't notice Mr. Today offering a slight nod of approval to Lanny before he turned and walked slowly across the lawn to approach the guests. Alex merely stood and stared. And as he stood there, he thought that he should be feeling all sorts of emotional somethings inside his heart and his gut, but all he felt was a chilled emptiness, as if by their entrance, by their mere presence, the three Quillens had sucked all the emotion from the entire place into their cold veins, and it had stuck and frozen there. Alex stared into his brother's eyes and watched Aaron stare back until Aaron could not help but look away. Ooh, and now we're going to switch to the other side. So it just so happened, usually it's six months before someone visits, the fact that they didn't know, they just show up and all of Artemis is sitting there. Like, what are the chances? Hmm. We knew it was coming, but geez. By this time, Claire Morning had weaved her way through the maze of Artemanians, and she walked in step with Mr. Today. Florence joined Simber and stood with her back to him, facing the crowd and training her eye on Samid, who looked like he wanted to disappear, and on Will Blair, who looked beyond eager to stand face to face with Aaron Stowe and blast him to tiny bits. But even Will saw that he would not win this challenge. Not now. He would have to save his venom for a new day, which now seemed nearer than ever. Of the three, it was Strang who was most shocked. But to say the high priest Justine and Aaron were not flabbergasted, would be a fantastic lie because they were quite beyond their capacities to speak. Their glances darted from the army of unwanted and strange creatures before them to the enormous mansion, to the sparkling blue-green sea, to the lush landscape and the forest in the distance. The high priest Justine, her eyes shooting fiery bits of anger and betrayal after the initial shock of it all, drew herself up to her full height and pressed her thin lips together so tightly they seemed to be a single white line painted on her rigid face. Governor Strang looked as if he might pass out at the sight of Simbert whose keen eyes moved from one quillin to the next, and whose body was tensed and ready to strike should the need arise. And Aaron Stowe stared and stared and inched backwards as all his nightmares came true before his very eyes. Simber caught the boy's eye and growled, such a deep low warning that it sounded more like a roll of thunder from somewhere beyond the border wall. Aaron stopped his inching and stood still as a, well, still as a statue. Mr. Today, with Claire at his side, approached the visitors. Oh, it's getting good again. Hmm. Greetings, Justine, said Mr. Today, 
He stood equally as tall, but scores less rigid than the ruler of Quill. Hello again, Aaron. Aaron's face grew pale. Justine's eyes flashed, surprised as she glanced at Aaron, and then she turned her fury back on Mr. Today, her voice dripping with contempt, hissed. Marcus? And while Marcus Today had been preparing himself for this moment for many years, it felt surreal. It felt beyond even the Madge's own ability to imagine. It felt almost not quite, but nearly pleasant to finally be at this spot so that he could soon put it behind him. And while he was a gracious man, he knew that now was not the time to say another word. The high priest Justine stood just as still and the two faced each other for several long, uncomfortable seconds. Both their minds whirring, deciding how best to continue this conversation in the presence of the menagerie. It was Justine who, by necessity as the time ticked, made the first move. She knew Marcus would take it as a sign of weakness, yet she saw no other way around it other than to stand there until the end of time and in the fashion of rulers throughout history. She said in a very deathly voice, I request a meeting in private. Mr. Today nodded curtly. That can be arranged. At the palace, eight o'clock. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Justine's face flushed hotly, but she kept her voice even. I beg your pardon? Here and now will do. The old mage turned to Simber. Clear the lawn, please. Everyone inside, so that I might have a word with the high priest and her comrades alone. Claire glanced at Mr. Today, concerned. He nodded. She hesitated and then left him alone with the three Quillins and began helping Simber funnel the unwanted into the mansion. Within minutes, nearly all of the Artemians had streamed inside. Alex paused to cast one last cool glance at his brother. They locked eyes for a moment. Volumes of things unsaid passed between them. For the first time since the incident in the mud, Alex sensed his brother's true fear. Alex, Simba growled softly. Alex broke the stair and slowly rounded the corner of the mansion along with the dregs of the crowd. In step with Miss Morning as Simber waited patiently and then followed them inside. Okay. Alex found his friends in the lounge where hushed conversations had taken the place of the usual music and laughter. He slumped down on the couch next to Megan, feeling like all the wind had been knocked out of him. He buried his head in his hands, rubbed the guilt from his eyes. I know you get guilt in your eyes. And then looked up and started telling Megan and Lanny the story. Soon Sean joined them and then Samid approached and sat down tentative, exchanging a glance with Alex. Alex shrugged and nodded. It didn't matter how, it didn't matter now what Samid knew or what he could do. Archimay was exposed. 
and it was Alex's fault. And then he shared what had happened the night before from the archives, archives floor of the library to the 3D door to the wolf. Except that instead of Will Blair, Alex said, someone. He wasn't sure why, only that he thought that it might cause more problems if word got out. Maybe they won't want to fight, Lanny said when Alex had finished. Are you stupid? Samid said. He looked uncharacteristically anxious and kept glancing at Alex, wondering if Alex had turned him in, but not daring to ask in front of everyone. Can you, can you imagine how furious the high priest must be knowing that Mr. Today has betrayed her all these years? She's got to feel like the biggest fool ever. If she doesn't want to fight and word of us gets out to the Quilitary, they'll take her down and come after us. Sean no nodded. No doubt, he said. Megan chewed her fingernail. I hope Mr. Today is all right out there. Don't worry, Sean said. There's nothing they can do to him. He could kill them all in an instant. They didn't appear to have any weapons, but I'm surprised Justine didn't arrive with her guards. She must have great confidence in Governor Strang and Aaron, or else she's grown so confident in her power that she no longer feels she needs protection. Well, that won't last long, Lanny said. The five sat in silence, waiting for news. When Earl announced that everyone was to return to the lawn, they all jumped up anxiously and headed for the tubes. The next chapter is going to be called Exposed. So that's it for the week. What you can do, there were like just... Draw me a picture of what Justine saw when she opened that gate. All those people out there, a huge mansion. Give me a picture of what they would have seen in that moment. That was like the most awkward, crazy moment of the book, really, right? Because they finally have been exposed. They've been discovered. So draw what that looks like. Um, yeah, or just give us comments, ideas of what you're thinking right now, okay? Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed.